Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, since my last video, there's been quite a few uh, movement things going on in the NHL, uh, so we'll jump right into it. So uh, to start off, uh, the Flyers have offered a uh, old, the older vet veteran Hal Gill a tryout. Uh, so that was on the seventh, I believe. So uh, in a, we'll, we'll find out soon enough how that went for him. Uh, I don't I don't think he's going to end up getting signed, to be honest. But I think that uh, you know. He is a good leader. He's not necessarily, you know, I think he'd be able to fill a, a third line, a third defensive pairing, excuse me, or uh, depth fairly well, but I don't think he's going to uh, get another chance. Also, St. Louis offered uh, Ryan Whitney, who played for the Edmonton Oilers, a, uh, a, uh, tryout. Uh, I'm not going to comment too much on that. I'm not too familiar with uh, Ryan Whitney, but uh, you know, if St. Louis thinks that uh, they need a bit of a veteran touch, maybe that's a good move for them. Uh, moving forward, a couple of re-signings here. Uh, so the Washington Capitals uh, re-signed their 22-year-old Marcus Johansson to a two-year, four million dollar extension, uh, and uh, you, you know he racked up uh, in the shortened season last year. He played 34 games. Uh, he put up six goals and 60 assists. You know, so for a 22-year-old who's you know new to the NHL and everything, I think that's a very good move for uh, for Washington. You know, it's not too crazy. You know, two million dollars a year is very feasible. Um, but you know he's still putting up points for you, so I think that uh, moving forward this season and further on, this is a very good move for uh, Washington. Uh, Phoenix also signed some young talent. They signed uh, their eighth overall pick from two thousand eight to a two year extension. Mikhail, no, not Mikhail, Mikhail Boddicker. Excuse my pronunciation there. He's 23 years old. They signed him to a two-year, uh, 2.55 million dollar deal. That's 2.55 each season, uh, and uh, he racked up 26 points in total last year. You know, once again, I think it's a good move. You know, you're locking in that old, that younger talent. I think it's you know uh, a great move. I'm going to uh, move on to uh, the Kiprasov retirement now. Uh, so today. I believe it was Mika Kiprasov announced his uh, his retirement from the NHL, uh, and uh, you know this isn't too surprising. I mean, I, I've always respected players who want to go out with a you know go out on a strong as opposed to you know just falling off to the point that you know you're destroying what people knew you as. Uh, and I think that he, he's perfectly aware that if he stays with Calgary, they're not going to do anything, you know, now they're completely a rebuild team. And I mean, that, that's very evident by how they traded away Jerome McGimba. And I don't think that, I, I don't think you could blame him for not wanting to be part of a rebuild. Uh, you know, he's at the point now where if he is going to play, I think he wants to compete for the cup. And I don't think that's feasible for the next 10, 15 years in Calgary, so I think that uh, Mika Kiprasov retiring, I don't think it's very surprising, and, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, best of luck to him in, uh, in his later years, and, uh, you know, he's I still respect him as a, being a very good goaltender when he played, and, uh, you know, I, I think that going out on a high is always better, and, I mean, that's partially why there was so much uh, controversy of whether or not, you know, Team Solani is going to resign or not, because, he was saying, I don't want to be playing it was a third line forward. I don't want to play on the fourth line, you know. I'm not going to resign unless I'm guaranteed second line time. So I think that, uh, you know, Kiprasov was in the same position and he realized, well, that's not going to happen on this team. You know, there's no way we're going to uh, be in a position of uh, being able to compete, really. Uh, now I want to talk about the uh, John Tavares being named captain. So he was named uh, the 14th captain of the New York Islanders and uh, I have to say this you know great move for the New York Islanders you know he's your guy of the future you know he is the reason why your team made the playoffs last year and I think that uh, you know that's why he was nominated for the heart you know I think that he is a truly tremendous player um, you know I know he's in my fantasy pool this year I'm looking forward to having him he's gonna really rack up some points and he's a tremendous leader and uh, you know I think that he makes, you know, the team. He makes Matt Molson play better, and he, you know, gives uh, Nabokov freedom, you know, to let in an extra goal because you know they're going to get it back when you've got 
uh, John Tavares. So uh, that wraps up this episode. So if you liked it, you go ahead and uh, click the like button. Or if you really want, uh, subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys.